Did you know that China currently operates only six nuclear-powered warships, specifically, nuclear-powered submarines? While the United States boasts a staggering 71, including both submarines and aircraft carriers? This stark contrast highlights a significant gap in nuclear naval capabilities, despite China's rapid maritime expansion. As of today, April 8, 2025, the PLA Navy has grown to become the world's largest navy by sheer number of vessels, with over 370 battle force ships. However, when it comes to the advanced technology and global reach provided by nuclear power, the US Navy remains unrivaled leveraging its fleet of 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and 60 nuclear-powered submarines to project power across the globe. China's nuclear fleet, though growing, is still in its early stages, with plans to expand to potentially eight nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines by 2030, signaling its ambition to close this gap in the coming years. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you subscribe to our channel, share, and like our video so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Nuclear-powered warships represent the pinnacle of modern naval engineering, harnessing the immense energy of nuclear fission to drive some of the most formidable vessels in the world's oceans. Unlike their conventionally powered counterparts, which rely on diesel or gas turbines and require frequent refueling, nuclear-powered ships, primarily submarines and aircraft carriers, can operate for decades without replenishing their fuel supply. This capability stems from nuclear reactors that provide virtually unlimited range and endurance, limited only by the crew's need for food and maintenance schedules. For example, a nuclear-powered submarine can remain submerged for months, stealthily traversing vast distances, while a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier can sustain high-speed operations and support a full air wing without the logistical tether of refueling ports. In modern naval warfare, these attributes are game-changers. Nuclear propulsion offers unparalleled strategic flexibility. The ability to project power across continents, maintain prolonged presence in contested regions, and execute missions with minimal vulnerability to supply line disruptions. For aircraft carriers, it means sustaining air operations, launching fighter jets, surveillance aircraft, and drones, anywhere in the world without pause. For submarines, it enables silent, long-duration patrols, armed with ballistic or cruise missiles capable of striking targets thousands of miles away. This endurance and reach are why nuclear-powered warships are linchpins in deterrence and power projection, especially in an era of great power competition. For China, integrating nuclear-powered warships into its military strategy is a critical step in its quest to become a global maritime superpower. The PLA Navy has historically focused on a massive fleet of conventionally powered ships, over 370 battle force vessels as of April 8, 2025, tailored for regional dominance in the South China Sea and Western Pacific. However, its current nuclear fleet is modest, with just six nuclear-powered submarines, compared to the US's 71 nuclear-powered warships. This disparity underscores a key limitation, while China can overwhelm in numbers near its shores, its ability to project sustained, long-range power lags behind. Recognizing this, China is investing heavily in nuclear technology, with reports indicating plans to field advanced nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, like the Type 096, and potentially its first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier by the 2030s. These developments align with Beijing's broader strategy, to transition from a coastal defense force to a blue water navy capable of challenging adversaries far from its borders, securing vital sea lanes, and asserting influence in distant theaters like the Indian Ocean or Arctic. In a world where naval supremacy hinges on endurance and stealth, nuclear power is China's ticket to closing the gap with the United States and reshaping the balance of power at sea. The South China Sea has emerged as one of the world's most volatile geopolitical flashpoints, where growing tensions are fueled by China's assertive territorial claims and the rapid expansion of its naval fleet. This contested waterway, through which roughly $3.4 trillion in global trade flows annually, is ringed by nations like Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan, all of whom have overlapping claims to its islands, reefs, and waters. China, however, asserts dominance over nearly 90% of the region through its Nine Dash Line, a vague historical claim rejected by a 2016 International Tribunal ruling, a decision Beijing dismisses outright. 
The escalating friction stems not just from these disputes but from China's ability to back its ambitions with an increasingly formidable PLA Navy, putting other nations at a stark disadvantage as they struggle to keep pace. China's naval buildup is nothing short of staggering. As of April 8, 2025, the PLA Navy commands over 370 battle force ships, making it the largest navy globally by vessel count, dwarfing the U.S. Navy's 290-ship fleet. While the U.S. maintains an edge in tonnage and nuclear-powered warships, 71 compared to China's 6, China's fleet is tailored for regional dominance, bristling with modern destroyers, frigates, corvettes, and submarines. Since 2000, China has launched more than 100 major surface combatants, including the Type 055 cruiser, one of the world's most advanced warships, while the U.S. has added fewer than 40. Beyond traditional warships, China's maritime militia, a fleet of hundreds of armed fishing vessels, and the world's largest coast guard amplify its presence, harassing rival claimants' ships and enforcing Beijing's will in disputed waters. This gray zone strategy, intimidation short of outright war, has left smaller nations reeling, as seen in repeated clashes with Philippine resupply missions at 2nd Thomas Shoal, where Chinese water cannons and floating barriers have become routine. For other nations, keeping up is a daunting challenge. The Philippines, with a navy of just 11 major surface combatants and a handful of aging vessels, relies heavily on U.S. support under their mutual defense treaty, but its own capabilities are outmatched. Vietnam, with around 50 naval vessels, including Russian-built frigates, has modernized modestly but lacks the scale to counter China symmetrically. Malaysia and Indonesia, while less confrontational, face intrusions into their exclusive economic zones, with limited naval muscle to respond. Malaysia's fleet hovers around 40 ships, many outdated. Even collectively, Southeast Asian nations under the ASEAN umbrella struggle to present a united front, hampered by disparate interests and China's economic leverage as a top trade partner. Japan and Australia, regional powers with advanced navies, 54 and 40 warships, respectively, bolster US-led efforts like the Quad, but their focus spans the broader Indo-Pacific, diluting their South China Sea impact. The US, despite its naval supremacy in global projection, faces its own hurdles. Its fleet, while technologically superior, is stretched thin across multiple theaters and shipbuilding lags. China outpaces it 20 to 1 in annual tonnage production. Freedom of navigation operations FONOPs, by U.S. destroyers like the USS Miley's challenge China's claims, but Beijing counters with shadowing warships and propaganda decrying foreign interference. Meanwhile, China's militarized artificial islands, equipped with anti-ship missiles and airfields, extend its reach, turning reefs into unsinkable outposts. This fortification, coupled with plans for nuclear-powered carriers by the 2030s, signals a shift from coastal defense to a blue-water navy, amplifying the pressure on rivals. Tensions flare regularly. In June 2024, a Filipino sailor lost a thumb to a Chinese ramming incident. In March 2025, Vietnam protested China's expanded Spratly claims. These skirmishes risk miscalculation, potentially drawing the U.S. into conflict via treaty obligations. Smaller nations are left scrambling, arming up via deals with Japan or France, joining U.S.-led drills, or quietly acquiescing to China's economic sway. Yet, none can match the PLA Navy's relentless growth, forcing a stark reality. Without a dramatic shift in strategy or unity, the South China Sea's balance tilts ever more toward Beijing's favor. China's pursuit of nuclear-powered warships marks a transformative leap in its naval ambitions, reflecting decades of technological investment and a strategic shift toward global maritime influence. As of April 8, 2025, the PLA Navy operates a modest but growing fleet of nuclear-powered vessels, currently limited to six nuclear-powered submarines, while aggressively advancing research into nuclear propulsion for larger surface ships, notably aircraft carriers. These advancements in design and capabilities signal China's intent to rival the United States and reshape naval power dynamics, though significant challenges remain. China's nuclear-powered warship program builds on its submarine fleet, which includes the Type 093, Shang-class, nuclear attack submarines, SSNs, and Type 094, Jin-class, ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs. The Shang-class, 
first commissioned in the mid-2000s, has evolved into the Type 093B variant, featuring improved reactor design for quieter operation, critical for stealth, and a vertical launch system, VLS, for enhanced weaponry. The Type 094, operational since 2007, carries JL-2 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs, with newer variants adopting the JL-3, extending range beyond 10,000 kilometers. These submarines, while noisier than US or Russian counterparts, reflect iterative design progress, with hulls stretching to 135 meters and displacements around 11,000 tons submerged. For surface ships, China is developing a land-based prototype nuclear reactor at the Nuclear Power Institute of China's Site No. 1 in Sichuan. Unlike early U.S. designs with multiple smaller reactors, for example, USS Enterprise, this reactor is a single, high-output unit akin to those powering modern Nimitz or Ford-class carriers. Satellite imagery and state documents suggest it's designed for a future nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, potentially the Type 004, with a displacement exceeding 80,000 tons. This shift to a single reactor prioritizes efficiency in space, supporting advanced systems like electromagnetic catapults EMALS, already tested on the conventionally powered Type 003 Fujian carrier launched in 2022. Nuclear propulsion offers China's warships unparalleled endurance and range. Submarines like the Type 094 can patrol for months without surfacing ascending nuclear-powered carriers, once operational, could sustain high-speed global deployments, projecting power far beyond Asia, into the Indian Ocean or Eastern Pacific, without the logistical burden of refueling. The Type 093B's VLS cells enable it to launch YJ-18 anti-ship cruise missiles, range approximately 540 kilometers, and potentially land attack variants enhancing its multi-role versatility. The JL-3 SLBMs on Type 94s provide a credible second-strike nuclear deterrent, a cornerstone of grade power status. For the prospective nuclear carrier, integrating EMALS, mirroring US Ford-class technology, would allow heavier aircraft with greater payloads to launch rapidly, boosting sortie rates and combat effectiveness. Nuclear power eliminates the need for frequent refueling, reducing reliance on vulnerable supply chains, a critical advantage in contested regions like the South China Sea. China's nuclear warship advancements, while impressive, face hurdles. Submarine reactor noise levels remain higher than those of U.S. Virginia-class SSNs, compromising stealth. The Type 093 accident in October 2023, which reportedly killed 55 personnel due to a suspected reactor malfunction, underscores safety and reliability concerns. Developing a carrier-sized reactor demands mastery of miniaturization, heat management, and radiation shielding, fields where the U.S. has decades of experience. Training crews for nuclear operations and managing radioactive waste further complicate deployment timelines, with experts estimating the Type 004 carrier might not enter service until the mid-2030s. China's nuclear-powered warships challenge the U.S.-led maritime order. With only six nuclear vessels versus the U.S.'s 71, the PLA Navy lags in blue water capability, but its trajectory is clear. By 2035, the PLA Navy's submarine force could reach 80 units, including more SSNs and SSBNs, narrowing the gap. A nuclear carrier would elevate China into an elite club, only the U.S. and France currently field such ships enhancing its ability to contest U.S. dominance in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. This shift pressures regional powers like Japan and India to bolster their navies, potentially sparking an arms race. The U.S., facing shipbuilding constraints, producing approximately 70,000 tons annually versus China's 1.4 million, may accelerate programs like AUKUS, sharing nuclear submarine tech with Australia. China's growing sea-based nuclear deterrent also complicates U.S. strategic calculus, particularly over Taiwan, where enhanced PLA Navy capabilities could deter intervention. Globally, a nuclear-powered PLA Navy amplifies Beijing's influence over key sea lanes, from the Strait of Malacca to the Arctic, while raising proliferation concerns if other nations follow suit. Yet, until China overcomes technical and operational gaps, the U.S. retains a qualitative edge. The naval balance is tilting, but not yet overturned, China's nuclear ambitions signal a long-term contest for maritime supremacy.
China has officially confirmed the construction of its fourth aircraft carrier, tentatively dubbed the Type 004, with a naval admiral and political overseer, Yuan Wazi, stating that progress has been technically smooth. The update emerged during Beijing's annual legislative meetings, a rare moment when PLA figures address the public. In a video interview shared by Hong Kong Commercial Daily on Weibo, Yuan, the PLA Navy's political commissar, hinted that whether the new carrier will be nuclear-powered will soon be announced, while dismissing rumors of technical setbacks. His remarks, delivered as the National People's Congress opened on Tuesday, March 2025, provide the first public acknowledgement of this addition to China's secretive warship program. Speculation about the Type 004 has swirled online, with illustrations, allegedly from Shanghai's Zhongnan shipyard, its presumed construction site, circulating for years. This follows the launch of China's third carrier, Fujian, in June 2022, which introduced electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear, boosting launch frequency and marking a leap towards superpower naval status. Though Fujian has yet to begin sea trials, debates persist about whether the Type 004 will adopt nuclear propulsion, a step that would enhance range, speed, and power for advanced systems, capabilities currently exclusive to the US Nimitz and Ford class and France Charles de Gaulle. PLA sources in 2022 suggested China's nuclear reactor tech wasn't ready for carriers, but Yuan's confidence hints at progress. China's carrier expansion aligns with its goal of a blue water navy by the 2030s, critical for projecting power, especially in the Taiwan Strait, where US-led freedom of navigation operations spark Beijing's ire. Taiwan, viewed by China as a breakaway province to be reclaimed, by force if needed, remains a flashpoint with the U.S. supplying arms despite not recognizing its independence. China's naval buildup, including stealth fighters and a 7.2% military budget hike announced Tuesday, reflects its 2049, world-class, military vision. Tensions escalate as the U.S. bolsters its Western Pacific presence, three carriers now, two more en route, countering China and North Korea's maneuvers. Yuan asserted China's ability for an all-round response but framed its carrier program as defensive, aimed at safeguarding sovereignty, not rivaling the US still, with Fujian nearing readiness and Type 004 on the horizon, China's naval ascent intensifies the global arms race. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, like and share our video. We will bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.